Now, for a closer look at today's uh, global sports stories, I'm joined by our guest, the sports analyst and basketball player, Olimide Oyedeji. Now, let's start with our top story. Uh, North Korea banning the foreign um, athletes due to fears of a bullet. Now, what do you think of this story? Uh, probably, I mean, this, I mean, this is not the first time that this happened. This has happened during the Olymp uh, Junior Olympics, Youth Olympic in China, mm -hmm. when some countries like Nigeria and other African countries were exempted. They did not allow them to get to the Gins Village. So after the team got to China, they had to send. They have to be sent back mm -hmm. to Africa. So because of this Ebola situation, so just very, very unfortunate that they're taking it beyond or the world supposed to be. I mean, everybody can just get tested before you get to the country. Mm -hmm. I'm not in support of you just sending athletes back because of the circumstance situation or where a lot of precaution can be, you know, they already took the precaution mm -hmm. before they go to the country. So I'm not in support of that. I think uh, maybe each federation have to find something before the athletes have to go all the way, get there, mm -hmm. get to North Korea, and you have your mind made up, and they say you can't do it. It's kind of very discouraging. But as a country, they're just looking after their own. Do you feel? Do you think that they have a right to do that oh, to protect their people? Oh yeah, I mean they have the right to protect the people. I mean down with this, no doubt about it. So that's the number one major concern. But probably I believe majority of the country just taking it too far. Just look at mm. Morocco. Mm. So I mean look at what happened. So I, I don't I don't really see this uh, because uh, North Korea and, or. Some countries that is the exempted from coming, the stuff from coming, they are not Ebola. I mean, they are not Ebola risk countries. Mm. Well, as you said, Morocco pulled out of hosting the Africa Cup of Nations, and of course, um, Equatorial Guinea stepped up to host it. But there's been no reported cases of Ebola when they hosted it. Oh, probably. So, I mean, I mean, if you say you want to say you want to quarantine players from the affected countries, mm -hmm. that's uh, okay. Maybe you try to take precaution. What about a country because you African? Because you come from the, the, that kind of discrimination. Mm -hmm. So I don't think uh, from Kenya, from uh, Ethiopia, the people are the runners. I mean, that is not, I mean, Ebola countries. Okay, well, moving forward, like, how can we move past this? I mean, you can't keep on banning athletes because of fears due to Ebola or any other virus that's happening at the moment. Uh, probably, I think the, the the measure right there, like International Olympic Committee, the International Sport Association, they need to come together. I have to find a way, find a solution to just okay, what do we have to do before this one come up? Mm -hmm. You're not going to say you want to back out a week or a month before the major tournament. That's absolutely not acceptable. Okay. Well, let's have a look at the other story as well. Um, it's, there's been a lot of focus on football off the pitch as well as on the pitch in the last week. Uh, first of all, it was the Chelsea fans that stopped the black man getting onto the train in the Paris metro. And now it's the West Ham fans uh, chanting anti-Semitic uh, chants um, on their way to White Hart Lane. Now, how much responsibility do the clubs have in regards to their fans? Uh, probably, first of all, I think um, uh, the clubs have to... I mean, the fans need to be more, you know, educated. They, they have to educate them more about the racism in sports, which is totally not acceptable because everybody has feelings. But at the same time, the teams can only do certain things because everybody's all grown people. We are adults. We mix with people, you know, place of walks, you know, whatever we do. So, I mean, when we t we're not talking about 10, 12, 13 years old, 14 years old mm -hmm. kids chatting this kind of words. We're talking about a grown adult. Mm -hmm. So in this situation, it's going to be very difficult for the, for team to sit down, every one of them, one by one. I think all of us have to come together to start to stop racism in sports entirely. Well, um, talking about uh, clubs taking responsibility, Chelsea have moved very quickly in banning five of their fans. And there's also been a really good statement from Kick It Out in regards to their action. They said, um, I, kick, I think Chelsea have been very excellent in the way they've approached things. They came right, right out of the tra traps and took responsibility for the fans, even though they'd rather those individuals didn't call themselves Chelsea fans. But right there, they're saying that the club have actually taken responsibility, even though... They didn't want to be associated associated with those fans. Oh, I mean, just... I mean, first of all, you have to understand a, a big team like Chelsea, like Tottenham, all this team, they have an image. Mm -hmm. So probably this, if you if you realize what oh, actually happened with the West Brom last year, with the kids with the NECA, so you saw what happened quickly. Mm -hmm. 
So in this situation... Well, there's a bit of confusion yeah, about that, that, yeah. that gesture as well. They didn't yeah. know, FA didn't know what to do um, with the NELC and they didn't know whether to ban him straight away. They had to um, look it over it again and again. And I think everyone was just a bit confused about what it actually meant. Yeah, but, but probably, you know, they have to investigate. But what I'm saying right there right now is like the team, they're a brand. So they have to protect the image of the club. They have to protect the image of the players. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, they're entertainers. So and they have to have the interest of their fans. So they must, whatever they have to do to protect the image of the team, of the players, of the fans, and they have to do it. And they have all those, all the fans, everybody looking up to the organization. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what they're going to do. So I'm probably just getting kudos for say we have zero tolerance. FIFA did the same thing, or we have zero tolerance for raising him in football. Well, actions definitely speak uh, louder than words. Uh, sticking with Chelsea, and of course, uh, that tackle on Emmanuel Matic. Um, Barnes has escaped punishment <laughs> from uh, the FA. Now, what are your thoughts on this? As a sportsman as well, oh, well you saw the tackle. It, it, yeah, I mean, I saw the tackle, but I mean, that was a bad tackle. That was one of the tackles that actually can really end your career. So it was really tough one, but referee do miss calls. But it was quite unfortunate. But he said the referee saw that and they, he didn't yeah, give it a red yeah. card. But, but you know, sometimes, no, most times, the referee doesn't really just see the first one. They'll see the reaction. Okay. You know, so that was what happened with Matty. Was, I felt really bad for Matty because he's a great player. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably, if, I mean, it can happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. So in that situation, uh, I could call it 50 50, but the referee made a decision, made a decision. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they made, they made the appeal. So hopefully we see what's going to happen with the FA. As a sportsman, can you understand uh, Matic's uh, reaction to actually just get up and actually start pushing him? De I mean, he shouldn't have done it. I mean, definitely. But... <laughs> I mean, I mean, de definitely it can happen to anybody because, I mean, sports is an emotional game. You're a competitor. So you compete on the pitch. So you really want something to get done. You go fired up. It can happen to anybody. I mean, we are human. So even Matic is human. We are human, the all footballers, we all have emotion running in us, so, but we should have to be able to control our emotion. But he, he was very aggressive. But like you said, it was, it was a career ending yes. tackle. So probably it was like, what are you doing? You've got to end my career. <laughs> I mean, why did you do this? So, but it was quite unfortunate that he had a red card. Mm. But probably, but the game wouldn't have resulted to that, assuming the referee just caution or just blew the weasel before that incident happened. OK. Uh, well, Mourinho has uh, been very, very vocal um, about uh, his side and um, that action, that tackle as well. He wants uh, video technology to be introduced to help the referees. Now, do you think there's a place in football? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, there's no, uh, I'm, I'm sure that will probably just going to be a great help. But you, but you have to look at him. But I mean, are they going to stop the game and go watch it? Or are they going to be <laughs> after the game? So you have to look out for what is going to happen. Just like, for example, in basketball, in a kind of close call like that, the last two minutes, they're going to stop the game. They watch the video. They say, okay, we're going to do this and that. If you look at American football, they, 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 they're doing the same thing. So in the video technology. So in football, how is it going to come out? Is it going to come out like after the game or is it they're going to stop the game? Uh, it, it's, it's kind of 50-50 call that they have to look at it, but maybe everybody have to acquire more knowledge. Maybe the referee have to be more responsible, more accountable. The players need to be more accountable, more responsible, mm -hmm. as well as the coaches. So in that situation, what Mourinho said, I, I agree with him, but I mean, we just have to keep trying to make things get better every day because nobody above mistakes. The referee make, they made some made calls. Mistake, everybody yeah. made mistakes. Like the yeah, one, the point he said, yeah. the point but, he said, they had a two penalties. Mm -hmm. It was hot. I was look at least what they say. He said we shouldn't have even be leading with five points. We should have be home with twelve points. It oh, he was a, very vocal yesterday. We saw yes. that. Yes, I but, mean, um, look at the Southampton game. He yeah. said we look at the last game. Uh, so, I mean, it's kind of situation like just okay. It's very, it's a, it's a very to interesting topic and one I don't think will uh, end any time soon. Uh, we'll talk to you in part two, especially about your career. I'm very interested about that. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, good. <laughs> And I'm rejoined by my guest, the sports analyst and basketball star Olamide Oidiji. And uh, let's start with your career, your amazing career. You've played around the world. You've spent three seasons in the NBA. What's what's new with you? What's next? Oh, probably right now, play, I'm play. I have an opportunity to play the London Lions. So I just come out and bring the fame stuff to the BBL. <laughs> and um, so far, right now, it's, it's been wonderful. Yeah. Well, you've played around the world. What's been the best thing? about playing abroad for different leagues? 
front, it just make you just learn more about yourself, learn about different, uh, different culture, different people. I mean, this is my job, and I have to take care of my job. So whatever they, whatever there's opportunity for me to do something, to make something, so to make something happen. It's a great opportunity playing the Olympics, playing the World Cup, playing the NBA, playing the EuroLeague, Asia Championship, just playing all around the world. Um, I, I, I see myself being blessed, thank God, and I have been an impact, being an inspiration to a lot of youth all over the world. I have to impact their life positively, and uh, this, most of them say they want to be like me. Don't try to be like me. Try to be better than me. Oh, well, what if they think that you are the best? They can't get any better than you. Oh, no, no. I mean, if, I mean, if you try to be like me, you limit yourself, you limit your ability. So try to aim higher, mm -hmm. and you can be better than me. So there's nothing special I'm doing that you can do better. And how does it feel to represent your country as well? Oh, probably, I mean, it's a great feeling. I'm probably the only African players to ever play in the Olympics, play in the World Cup, play in the NBA, play in the League, won the African Championship. So it's a great feeling, great honor. I see myself a great, I mean, it's a great privilege. Mm -hmm. So, and um, I don't want to be, the, I don't want to be the last one. I want to see all the African players coming up and do something for themselves, for their family, for the country, and for the continent. But not only on sports, only but also about education, yeah. because there's always life after well, that, after sports. That leads me on nicely to the next question. Uh, what are you doing for grassroots, for the next generation? Oh, probably, I mean, I have a different program. I have a Lumi Dodeji Youth Foundation. In the UK right here, I have a program called Shoot a Ball, Not a Gun, Pick a Book, Not a Knife. Uh, back home, I have a program they call it Oops and Read. Play mm -hmm. basketball, they have a, a mentorship. I'm a psychologist. I have a program called a Bright Future Leadership and Youth Empowerment Program. I have another program <laughs> called a Drop Out, Drop In, and Read to Succeed. You're a busy man. So, so you don't just play. Probably there's a lot of all my stuff being mm -hmm. around education mm -hmm. and sports because they're always live. If you don't want to leave sports one day, sports is going to leave you. Okay. Well, you've also uh, been appointed by FIBA as the uh, Players Commission executive member. Now, how did you hear about this? How did how did you hear the good news? Oh, probably. I mean, I was just I just check I just saw the email from the FIBA. They asked everybody. We had uh, over hundred thousand people submitted this, ask you to submit the CV all over the world. Mm -hmm. To be among the 10, both male and female, you know, to be commissioned, to be part of the commission, I mean, it's a great privilege. It's a great honor for, you know, I mean, I have a fellow uh, African countryman, Boniface Udon from Senegal. Mm -hmm. So for me to be among those uh, great people that can be among the FIFA player commission, it's a great feeling just put together with a, being a Laura Globe ambassador. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, I mean, it's a great feeling, great things happen, but I give glory to God, but that, that also a challenge for me to do more, to do better, and to give back more. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us this thank evening. Thank you very much. You've been a great guy. I can't wait to have you back on.